You hear this a lot. Don't go to this country alone. Don't go on this vacation alone. Leave these places to going with a group or just don't go at all. But I am here to tell you that's not necessarily always the right idea. And this country to me was the perfect proof of get out of your comfort zone and make sure that if you do travel, sometimes travel off the beaten path. And as someone who runs a digital sports media company and also loves sports and loves travel, I was intrigued to head out to Serbia. Yes, Belgrade or Beograd, Serbia. And the reason for that was simple. I heard there was the most dangerous match in the whole entire world or dangerous soccer match called the Eternal Derby. So I made my way out there for the first time and it was absolutely phenomenal. Now, now after I went to that match, I returned over two more times to Serbia in a six month span while I was in Europe and each time I fell in love more and more with the country until I decided to stay there for weeks and even though people said what are you going to be doing in Serbia alone Serbia is a dangerous country even though I don't never actually heard anyone in Europe call it a dangerous company that's just something here in the United States that you hear a lot about any country that they don't know much about which is kind of unfortunate because there's so many hidden gems in this world so let's just talk about a little bit why I fell in love with it and kind of some things about going there alone as this series right now when I'm not traveling or I am not vlogging I am trying to do yeah, we had a little uh, microphone mishap when I'm not traveling I am trying to get you guys a little bit more of an idea of what it was like when I was traveling kind of offer that perspective back on the other end so let's start off with my first trip to Serbia for the Eternal Derby and by the way I didn't vlog as much back then other than sporting events so what I'm gonna try to do here is overlay anything I have in the screen so you can see so my first trip to Serbia was driving from Budapest Hungary to go to the Eternal Derby and man the border the first time was a little bit intimidating. I took out my passport and I'm from Syria originally and I am now, you know, a US passport, but it still says born in Syria. And to them, that was like a big, big deal. And they're like, what are you gonna be doing in this country? Why are you coming here? They literally took me out of the car, searched the whole entire car. And my name is George, right? And they were like, oh, is that your real name? I was like, guess it's my real name from Syria, named George. And they finally like, what are you doing here in Serbia? I said, I was going to the Eternal Derby for uh, the game, Partizan versus, uh, Partizan versus uh, Red Star. And they were like, oh, who are you rooting for? I'm like, shoot, these guys are intimidating. Hope I don't pick the wrong team. I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't care. They're like, no, 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 you have to tell me who you're rooting for. And I was like, fuck. All right, who, who am I rooting for? I'm rooting for Red Star kind of looked at me, you know, thick Serbian accent is like, welcome to the country, and just stamps it. And that was like my first experience in Serbia. Went out first night in Serbia, um, got there, I think around seven, eight o'clock. Uh, I was going to the Eternal Derby the next day. And I was like, all right, what do I do here in Serbia? Um, so I went to Skardaia, which is like this famous street full of restaurants, live music. Here, I have it on here on the screen. I'm gonna overlay anything I can also find. And it was so much fun. The beer was cheap, the food was good. And I just overall was like, damn, this place is really, really fun, right? And it's a lot more safe than I expected. And I knew it was already a party city. It is known as maybe Europe's most, like the best party city in all of Europe. And that's over Ibiza and Munich and Berlin. Like it is known as a big party city. and. So I was like, all right, what do I want to do after here? I smoke hookah, love hookah. So I ended up at a hookah bar for like two hours having hookah, met some people, ended up going with them to a nightclub on the river, those floating river nightclubs, a lot of fun. Um, I got a freestyler. I know it's like a very typical club for tourists to go to more than foreigners, but they wanted to give you that like uh, foreign experience. Next day I went to the Red Star Derby um which was pretty crazy i was at a bar beforehand having some beers and some of the uh plum brandy that serbia is known for and three guys sitting right next to me i saw some of them here on, on like instagram and stuff and i still have their phone numbers 
but they were like saw me and they were, like saw me already buy, I bought a like bootleg jersey they're like oh what what are you doing here I said I'm going to the Red Star Partizan Eternal Derby they're like oh we've been before we're from Russia like, oh have a drink with us they bought me a beer we had a drink bought another shot had a shot together took a, the <laughs> took the car together they're like oh come with us in a taxi and in my head like this is a bad idea but like screw it whatever so I took the taxi with them ended up in uh, the game different seats unfortunately I probably could have went to their seats no one was really checking seats but the derby was absolutely insane and I've actually pinned that here up top so if you want to watch my video at the eternal derby you can watch the whole vlog there God, that was a crazy, crazy day. Went back, went back to the same hookah bar, ended up smoking, and then the next day, drove back to Hungary. And lo and behold, a couple weeks later, I was like, all right, um, where am I gonna go here? And then I look online, and the Euro Final Four for basketball happens to be in Belgrade. And I was like, this is just a calling. I'm, I run a sports media company. I'm making videos about sports. I'm going to the final four, and I think the final four was Athens, for Istanbul, Real Madrid, Barcelona, and I think Olympicanos from Athens, Greece. So I went like to these games and watched basketball, but there was such a busy time. I should have like booked way earlier. So I get to Belgrade, right? And this was one part of Belgrade like I didn't like, and I was like, all right, well, shoot, there's no rooms available because the final four is going on on Airbnb. Hotels are through the roof. What am I gonna do? I find this Airbnb near the airport. I'm like, fine, I'll do. A taxi drops me off. I open it up, and it is a disaster. Like I got some, hopefully, videos here will do the justice. But it was an absolute disaster. I'm like, I don't even know how the heck I'm gonna sleep here for four nights. So I was like, all right, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I was like, all right, I'm going to go through the first night, see if like I can get through it. And I'm not like that picky of a traveler. Couldn't get through it after the first night. So I like just call Airbnb. I cancel it. I actually get a refund, which is pretty cool. And I can't find a place. Like hotels are crazy expensive. But I have no freaking idea what I'm going to do. And I want to take an Uber to the city. I want to find a taxi to the city. There's no taxis in that area. It was kind of a shady area. There's Cargo, which is their kind of Uber system, which is also kind of like, by the way, if you're going to Serbia, you can use Cargo. It's a little cheaper than taxis or about the same price, but definitely not the same service as you would get from Uber. So I actually end up taking the uh, Cargo and I'm like sitting at a cafe and I'm just refreshing Airbnb and a place opens up right in the center of the city for like 95 bucks a night, which is very expensive in Serbia. But during the final four, where the whole entire Europe, like basketball fans are in the city, it was not that expensive. If you can hop on there, get 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 the Airbnb, stay there for four nights. It's perfect, old city. I hope like if I have the overlay, I'll overlay with it elevator it looks like you have to like pull the elevator but it was right in the middle in the heart of Belgrade and I loved my experience there fun city and just overall great so finish all that and do the final four but then I'm like you know what I'm in love 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 with Serbia so what did I do I book again to Serbia this time for weeks to work digitally and I have to say it's the best, there was maybe the best experience of digital nomading in all of Europe. The city was fun, the nightlife was amazing, there was so many fun things to do, the food was fantastic and affordable. Um, like I always tell the story about this hookah bar I went to and it was in Skardija, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. I go there, I get two hookahs, like my, my own hookah then a hookah head refill. And I smoke hookah, which by the way, I should probably do these like story videos over a hookah from now on. I think that'll be kind of my next step here. And I got three vodka sodas and my bill was $14. And I tipped like three, four, five bucks, I think to make it 20, like a 33% tip. And that was all it cost. And overall, that's why I love this place. The atmosphere is good. The food is good. The people are nice. It is friendly. It is safe. As long as you're not looking for drugs or you're trying to do anything shady, you'll not get in trouble. And that's why I would say it was my favorite digital nomading experience in all of Europe, and that is in Biograd, Serbia. I'll try, what I'm gonna try to do here on this like channel right now is like post like series. So I'm gonna do Serbia for a little bit, then I'll move to Montenegro, Croatia, and just go country by country until I can actually travel again. But in the meantime, so I'll do like a vlog here in Arizona, vlog or a story time in a different country and kind of take you guys on 
on a like forward and backward trip. My name is George Arjour. The channel is called George on Tap. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you leave any comments, have you been to Serbia before? What do you think of it? The hospitality I think is amazing. And we'll see you guys next time.